Hey, look who it is. Slinks, what up, boy? And here is Guapo and Lola. Are you gonna climb on the door? You gotta get at least on one side, kid, or else I can't open the door. So if we look over here, guys, we got a blackhead python. Let's see, if I just stick my hand in there, how bad will it be for me? Yeah, you guys are looking down the body of a really cool thing. Whoop, almost got me there. You did, you almost got me. Oh, he got me. <laughs> they look like retics. Oh, ow, ow, God, that scared the hell out of me. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here and uh, today we are gonna do a little cleaning on all my snakes. So you're gonna get to see all my snakes. We're gonna clean them up and we're gonna finish off with Princess Buttercup and her new enclosure because I added a few things to make her life a little bit more enjoyable and to make it look a little more aesthetically pleasing. Right now, we're just gonna uh, hang out with Colin and Peter and I'm just gonna pretty it up and show you why I actually like to uh, do things on the outside. Now we just had a nice rain, so these these guys were nice and dry over here. But uh, I wanted to just spot clean uh, the enclosure. So we got some shed here. I love the shed. Sometimes I like to leave it, but we'll go ahead and pull this nice shed off. It's a pretty good shed here, huh? All right, look at that. Nice full shed. We'll just dump that in there. And uh, you can see these two. They're right here. Hey guys. Come here, say hello, where are your little faces? There they are. There's Peter and there is Colin right there, looking uh, pretty handsome. So these two are carpet pythons. They're a member of the Morelia genus and they're from Australia. Yeah, place I love to go. So uh, right now, look at how nice and clean this is, guys. This is why I like keeping things outside. You can just easily spot clean the urates and poops and sheds. Here's a nice one there, here's poopies and I use my latex gloves. Uh, the water runs right through. We got a drip system, so that water is always being cycled through. So uh, don't worry too much about the water. Now these guys are laying up on top of their uh, house, so I'm not able to get inside the house, but again, just spot cleaning. This is what I do, super easy to do here in an outdoor enclosure. Now, I really don't worry much about mites and stuff like that outside. I find the snakes are very clean, and as long as you keep them clean, uh, you don't have to worry about too much of that. Now, every now and again, I will get ticks. That is one thing that I do encounter here. Uh, so I just make sure I keep an eye on them, remove ticks as I see them. But there are certain times of the year where you get more ticks than others. Uh, but these snakes are doing really well. And I like this enclosure. It's working well. Uh, here's a little more little shed that I'll just pull off. Oh, look at this. Didn't even see that there. All right, cool. So it's not bad. Just kind of clean it up. And we'll move on, man. We'll go on over and get the other guys clean up their houses. But uh, I love it. I covered this thing in bamboo. It's an old chicken coop that I reinforced and made a little bit more snake friendly. So um, pretty happy about that. And what's cool is also when you keep things outside, you'll sometimes get plants that just kind of appear naturally. And I like that as well because I love making sure the animals have uh, greenery and plants to interact with and hide in and feel more secure. I love keeping the snakes outside. Now, you guys know that for the longest time I kept them in vision cages inside. And it's just, for me, very boring, you know. Um, I like seeing animals in a more naturalistic environment. So when I got them out of those vision cages, I was super happy. And I'm even going to upgrade the three lizards, uh, excuse me, the three snakes we're about to go see. Uh, they're going to be going into some new enclosures, um, probably this fall, um, when it cools down. Because it's so hot and rainy right now, that it makes working outside, uh, let's just say it makes it uncomfortable. By the way, I hope you guys like my cool Godzilla shirt I got for my birthday last week. Pretty stoked, huh? Look at that. That's awesome, man. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law hooked me up. And uh, one of my favorite gifts. Hey, look who it is. Slinks, what up, boy? There's Slinky, and here is Guapo and Lola. Are you going to climb on the door? You got to get at least on one side, kid, or else I can't open the door. Come on, come over here. Come over here. This is, this is the only downside of trying to get to clean your snakes. You got to get through this big old guy here, and sometimes he gets super excited. He thinks he's going to get fed. So uh, right now, he sees this bucket and thinks it might be the food bucket. So he's gonna make things difficult for me. So, come on, man, you gotta move over. You gotta move over. Come on, a little bit, a little bit, move over. Almost there. You're almost there, buddy. Come on, can you just do me a favor? Uh-huh, almost. 
almost ay 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 what a turkey this is this is challenging stuff here people there you go all right now what I, oh see we got these two i don't want this guy coming over come here will you let go oh my god they're claws he is such he's on there come on i don't want to get slinky in here he'd like to eat something in here as you know he'll eat anything slinks i don't trust that monitor not when food's around all right so here are the snakes yeah and um let's see who we got Ah, oh, looks like the there's some poops that i gotta clean from the blackhead so uh the only thing about this design i can't really reach without kind of getting up onto this thing so i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna empty this real quick i just empty it out and what's gonna happen is the rain and the water spigot's gonna fill it back up and here we go we got this we got poopies oh and don't worry i'll actually show you a snake in this video as well you're not just gonna look at the blackhead python's poop we'll go ahead and grab the blackhead python and pull him out he was out a little while ago before I decided to film and then he just disappeared. So here's the urates. I can just really simply spot clean. I love that. Um, it's just an easy way to kind of keep this, this uh, enclosure clean. So that's all the poop I see. Oh, there's poop over there. But that's going to be a tough one to reach. So let's use, a, let's use an implement. Let's see if I could scoot this poop closer to me. If I had my snake hook, it might have been easier, but we'll just do it like that. Scoop the poop. There we go. This looks like a nice fresh one also, which is, um, gosh, good thing I'm wearing the latex glove here. Got to wear gloves. Oh, we just pull it all out. There's some there. Little hair pellets. There's a lot of poop in here. Lots of poop. But when it's outside, what's neat is I get dung beetles and they actually do a lot of cleaning as well. So that's pretty neat when we see the dung beetles come in here and they do their thing. We got a little text message as well. I'll check that in a little bit. Uh, all right, this looks pretty good. Put that down there and let's, just because I'm starting to get a little bit more anal, that's hair. They can digest everything except feathers and hair so if we look over here guys we got a blackhead python hiding out in there hey guys let's see if i just stick my hand in there how bad will it be for me ah you just got to do it really quick i guess no worries come on out come on out come on out don't bite don't be angry i just wanted to show everyone how cool you are and you're pretty cool snake so I just wanted to get you out and exercise a little bit, buddy. There you go. Yeah, you guys are looking down the body of a really cool snake. Let's just get this closed. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks for allowing me to do that without getting too upset. So the blackhead's a really cool snake. Um, always wanted this species. I'd love to get another. I actually haven't sexed this animal, so I think it is a male. Um, but it's a beautiful snake from Australia. It is a um, snake that will go underground. It goes into burrows. It will actually use its uh, strength to squeeze animals against the uh, walls of their burrows. And that's how they pin them and they can even suffocate them in that fashion. Uh, they'll also constrict in the traditional fashion. They are reptile specialists. They'll eat lizards, they'll eat snakes. Um, they are really good at eating reptiles. However, in captivity, I got this guy here on rodents and amazing feed response from this snake really just a, just goes right for it uh they can be viewed as nippy but um this one is uh pretty good not so bad although earlier he did try and get my camera uh, but yeah here he is he's kind of taking a look at you guys he's in a little s position so i don't know what kind of mood he's in oh my gosh I love blackhead pythons. They, the other python that's in the same genus is the uh, Woma python. Really like Womas also. I just like that look they have. So beautiful animals. Oh, this is this little fake log that I kind of made like that. But uh, good looking snake. Um, and like I said, not afraid to take a swipe at you. So very cool. All right, guys. Let's shut this door. 
and move right along to one of the other or one of the other species of snakes I keep, which happens to be right next door to the blackhead. Um, again, these are enclosures that eventually are going to be taken down because Slinky is going to get full run of this entire habitat. We'll be doing a collaboration with Universal Rocks coming up this fall. And um, once the iguana cage gets built, these guys are all moving out. So are the Chinese box turtles. They're going to move out to a new habitat. All the animals here. So I'll open this all up. So Slinky is going to have quite the upgrade here. Um, so I think you guys will dig that. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so look what we got. We got some poop and things to clean up here. So let's get to it, shall we? Uh, this is the Timor Python habitat. And uh, these animals came from the Bronx Zoo. Um, these animals were bred there and I belong to different organizations and we provide a place for some of these animals to go. And so that's what I'm doing. And right now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of behaving like, look, I'm behaving like I'm a, uh, a rodent or something. These guys are from the island of Flores. They're actually not found on the island of Timor. I've said that before in other videos. So they're actually, uh, it's funny to call them a Timor python, but they're not actually from the island of Timor, which I find funny. They're actually from the island of Flores. So let's see if anyone's going to try and bite me right here. They know it's a hand uh, or if it's... Do they think it's a rodent? Will you come out, do you think, guys? Will you guys come out to show everyone what's going on? Well, almost got me there. You did. You almost got me, you silly goose. But I'm pretty quick. Pretty fast for an old man. Getting fast. Oh, they're so strong. They, they're so strong that they... Oh, here comes one. There you go. And you can just see how beautiful this snake is, huh? Is that not a beautiful snake? Gorgeous, gorgeous animal. I love the Timors. They are beautiful. Very reminiscent of a uh, retic, okay? They look like re Oh, he got me. <laughs> he got me. Woo, you got me. I wasn't fast enough. You got me, buddy. You win. Oh, man. Got nailed, but this is fun. So I just want to tickle him. Come here. Come on. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, they look like retics. Oh, they look like retics, but they are, in fact, uh, different species. But what's cool about them uh, besides their striking abilities, uh, is the fact that they have such a cool look. Uh, but they do have, these guys are definitely not in the mood. They have quite the ornery, ornery, uh, ouch. The, ow, ow, God, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> this guy's getting my feet. This guy's not even got me. Holy smokes. Sometimes it's a little crazy working in here, especially in sandals because, um, hey, guys, take it easy. Uh, I'm just trying to clean your enclosure. Now you guys have seen these these snakes attack me before. <laughs> they don't like when I wake them up. Um, but I still got to clean this enclosure. And I'm still getting bitten by my box turtles. Gosh, so much drama here today. All right, guys, can you do me a solid? Stop it. <sighs> Beautiful snakes though, nonetheless. And you can see those labial pits. Those labial pits they have really are helping them zero in on warm-blooded prey so a uh, very functional creature and just a tiny little pinprick is caused me to leak a little bit which is okay tiny tiny pinpricks they got nice teeth there they're uh semi-arboreal they'll move about the ground and in the trees and they'll grab birds and bats and all manner of uh, prey items uh in their native range here they're eating rodents and they do a good job of it really robust feeders so uh pretty cool all right well i don't see much of anything else really i got some pellet here but i'm not really seeing too much in the way of waste uh i don't know about you guys maybe this one over whoa gee, stay there stay there here you guys keep an eye on them keep them let me know if i'm gonna get bit oh, i'm looking good all right cool all right all right let's leave these little maniacs alone i'm getting attacked here uh, so now we'll move over to the hog island boas where to be perfectly honest Same situation. These guys can be a little ornery or heavy feed response as well Let me wipe you guys down a little bit that better for you a lot of smuts from the Timor pythons on you All right, we're gonna open this up Are you gonna go in are you gonna go in or are you gonna hang out? What are you gonna do? Here's some poop Let's clean this up All right, 
I'm gonna actually throw this right around some of the plants because it's really good fertilizer. Um, I know we had some poop. Oh, look at these guys have doubled up in here. Here's some poop right here, yuck. Clean out their house. Oh my gosh. Now let me see if I can pull the hog islands out without getting nailed. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work because she's half in and half out. Yeah, she needs to slither on out, but you can see how beautiful she is. These guys are from a small island right off the coast of Central America. And um, it's the only place this subspecies is found. They're a locality, if you will. And so this locality has these muted colors. Uh, they do not get as large as their mainland cousins, but they are beautiful. I like the muted color. Um, and it does get into a red tail. So it is a subspecies of boa constrictor. Um, but uh, yeah, man, like I said, stay smaller, feeding on rodents. Uh, is this the male or is this the male? I don't know. This is the male. Oh, don't nail me. There you go. Really nice, beautiful snakes. Not much. They're not going to get bigger than this. Not too much bigger than this. Um, basically, these are adults. So here they are. Uh, gorgeous. I love their eyes. Pretty eyes on these snakes. Just beautiful colors. And the iridescence is really nice as well. So I just wanted to show you guys how they're doing uh, and show you how I kind of go through and clean up everything as I as I can. And you see how easy it is, guys? Most of the, the feces will actually decompose and go into the soil. And you see, we've got plants growing. We've got ferns growing. I mean, I love that. And another thing I love is the fact that we've got moss growing on their branch right here. And they do use this stuff. They do come out, they'll bask, they climb, they curl up like the Timors will curl up on their, uh, on their perch and just relax. Um, that's what they do, they're ambush predators. So they'll find a place in the wild, they'll just curl up and wait for something to cruise by, a bird or something like that. And they'll just take a swipe and take a chance at a meal. Here, Camp Cannon, these guys get fed and spoiled. So we uh, feed them about once every 10 days. So they're doing well. So there, there I really don't keep too many snakes. Look at how this animal's getting up there very nicely. I don't keep too many snakes only because in the past, um, you know, the way we keep snakes, snakes is kind of boring. I hated just keeping them in a vision cage. But now that I have these zoo exhibits um, that I'm gonna be working on and trying to make better, uh, maybe I can get some other species of snakes as well that I've always liked. I like scrub pythons, I like olive pythons. I don't know if they're, gonna be easy enough for me to find but i'm sure someone hey what are you doing out there look at this this little devil i locked this but this is why we have the double doors here because i locked this he's so strong he can push through the bottom oh my gosh come on slanks and once he gets in here it's a big pain in the neck for me to get out will you come on oh my god you're stuck here come on come back over what a little demon you are a naughty boy man you are naughty. Now be nice to me. I'm in sandals. He smells the poop or something. I don't know. He's looking for food. It's uh, probably a good day to feed these guys as well. So come on. There he is. See how I just let him do his thing nice and gently. Now these guys are related to snakes. They're in the order Squamata. Snakes and lizards are kind of relatives. They shared a common ancestor. And that's why we'll find... So Whoop, careful. Well you, well, you really are sniffing my feet, buddy. No, I can't, I can't have you out again. And I got to step in this muck. I can't have you out. Love you. See you later. Nope. Will you get your head out of there? He is a rascal slinky, which is, again, why he's got such a big enclosure and why I'm going to make it even bigger uh, so that he doesn't... Because, because he's so intelligent, he really needs to move around and investigate and do all those kinds of things. Um, I like giving them big enclosures, you know? Uh, the other thing I was saying is about squamats, squamata, um, is the fact that they had a common ancestor. And you can even see uh, the forked tongue and slinky, um, and then some of our legless lizards uh, move about just like snakes will do. All right, so now it's time to come on in here and show you the big Burmese python cage. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this critter on the channel. Look at her. She's in her, in her bath. That's really cool. Now that we have built this, um, you know what? I got out of that small room. We got all the snakes out. We're gonna start seeing more of them because I was never really too proud of those habitats. And I finally got motivated and just built something that is worthy of a creature like her. So since we last saw this enclosure, um, I wanna show you, look, there, people were asking if you would show her moving. Now what I wanna do, guys, I've walked in. 
And what I like to do is I like to tap her every time. Even when I was uh, keeping her in a vision cage, what you do is you let her know she's not getting fed by a tap, just a gentle tap. And this way she knows it's not feeding time, this is just hangout time. Same thing in the small cage. Now that she's in the big cage, if I don't continue to reinforce this behavior, I could walk in one day, she could take a swipe at me, nail me, um, and I could get backed into a corner pretty easy. So you gotta be uh, conscientious of what you're doing and consistent with how you care for a large constrictor snake like this. And make no mistakes, Burmese pythons are very large. Uh, they're considered a giant constrictor because they can get uh, 20 foot long or long, longer to be honest. Um, so here's what I did. Obviously I put some plants in. Plants uh, like these philodendron that require low light. We do have some LED lights up here. We've got, we've got ourselves a really cool fern that's hanging. Same species there. This will kind of drape down a bit more and add a little more dimension to the enclosure. I added this rock to break up the gravel. Um, I'm gonna add branches to this as we continue to find them. It's not something that just falls out of the sky. I gotta see the right branch. And now that we have this cool uh, bridge, I can like lay branches over it uh, to give it a more natural look. Some of you were concerned that this might be too steep for her to climb up. I assure you that's not the case. Snakes are incredibly adept at moving about without legs and she can certainly crawl up that without any issue. Um, she'll use certain irregularities uh, to brace herself at different points and she can slither right on up. So not really worried about that at all. And I like making her use those muscles. Uh, it's enrichment and exercise, okay? So she's got to figure out how to get up here. And she will, and I can't wait. I'll post photos on Instagram and stuff when we see her in different areas of the enclosure. But for now, I'm looking at her body language, right? Look, she looks kind of essed up. Maybe she's a little nervous, so I want to give her space. Um, I don't want to upset her in any way, so we'll just hang back a little bit. I'll give you guys a good shot. You can just see her soaking, and this makes me very, very happy, guys, because when I kept her in the vision cage, she only had a small water dish to drink from. I'd have to bring her out and put her in the pond if I wanted her to soak or wanted her to have that kind of enrichment. Now she found this on her own. She slithered in. She's been soaking for the last day. So my guess is she's going to be shedding soon because her eyes are starting to get a little foggy. Uh, so she's preparing herself for that moment when she's going to shed. Uh, some of the other things I'm going to add in here is an automatic watering situation for this that'll come on for about 15 minutes every day like I have in the outdoor enclosures. The water will flow up, go through the standpipe and out through the back. Um, and I can easily just run the poly tubing to feed that. And then for the plants, I'll just put some misters up here. Very simple. Just attach some misters so that, like I said, for 15 minutes, she gets a good raining. Uh, this is dirt beneath this. It just, we're, we're actually built up on a soil pad higher than the um, kind of the uh, ground level. So the water will drain out without any issues. Uh, but I love it. Up the humidity in here and it'll be perfect. So again, uh, checking out her box. She has not found out the box yet um, because since it's not at the edge of something, she just hasn't found it out. And we have these uh, kind of flaps. I may remove the flaps. We don't really need them in here. It's a passive heat um, barrier. Uh, we don't need that in here because this whole thing is insulated. So um, I just went for it. But here, just nice and simple. Just a nice simple box for her to get into and feel nice and secure. And believe me, all 13 feet of her will fit in that box. They enjoy a nice tight hiding spot. So there you have it, everybody. We hung out, we saw all the snakes today, showing you the plans that I have for them. Remember guys, I'm a one man show here and uh, I gotta wind up doing all this on my own. I gotta get motivated and that's just what I do. So uh, stick around and watch because as I uh, get to it, things will get done. Uh, right now, all the snakes are out, which makes me very happy. Uh, their quality of life is much better now. So, uh, yeah, more on the horizon, guys. I got a lot I want to do, and I appreciate you guys for coming with me on this journey as we make these animals' lives better, and we educate each other, and we learn about these fascinating creatures. So thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again really soon. So long.